Listen up, partners. This is Good, Bad, Ugly on World Improv Network. Good evening, everyone. I am Alex. And I'm Jim. And you know what? There is no Asa. There's no Chris. There's no Colin. There's no Bree. There's no Kevin here today. It's just us two, and we are going to be your lean and mean, astute wind counselors to get you through any problems that you have or any grind issues that you're currently facing. So let's get right to it, Jimbo. Oh, meanness not guaranteed, because we're both really nice people. That's true. That's the problem. Hmm. That's why we need that balance that Asa mm. provides, you know? Yeah. Kinda All that rage and animosity All that, that animosity he has inside rage, of him. Yeah, that pent-up anger, like a <laughs> steroid-infested bodybuilder. Um, anyway, all right, we're going to go to our first winner, and that's Gary. All the way from Lagos, Nigeria. What up, Gary? How you doing, Gary? I don't know what time it is. I'm going to guess it's probably about 12 or 13 hours ahead of us. Maybe, nah, mm. I'm going to say, I'm going to say somewhere between 10 or 11. I, we could Google it, but I think you're somewhere around there over in Nigeria. So. No, I, I, let's do that. Let's take a, about a minute or so of dead air. While we Google, Google the, the time, time in Nigeria. Lot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, Gary, since you're listening, I'm assuming we're going to get to your question. And you say, you ask, Dear Wynn, why are vampires so popular in movies and within pop culture in the United States? Hmm. Um, I, I think I have a, I have an idea about this. Okay. Um, well, so there, it depends on what kind of vampires you're dealing with. Oh, you think there's actually like specifically different kind of vampires? Well, it, it's so, m- the most popular recent vampires have, has been the whole like Twilight thing. Right? right. It's because all women have an inherent desire to fix a broken man. Oh, I see. And, that, and a good looking one at that too. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And if he's, I mean, all, all vampires, they're dealing with the pain of immortality, dealing with, you know, uh, the loss of all their, their family over time. There's just an inherent sadness mm-hmm. to the vampire, mm-hmm. which makes it irresistible to women. And can you imagine that if you don't die, how long you can sit on regret? Because oh, you can't move on. I mean, you're like, no. what's my incentive to move on when I know it doesn't matter? I'm, I'm, I'm here forever. Yeah. You know, where you know if you've got a certain amount of days and years or a certain amount of life to live, you say, okay, I can get over this. I've got to move on. Mm-hmm. But when you've got that much uh, regret and pain to have to deal with and you can't die. You can wallow for eternity. Yeah, and so you always need a woman to fix you. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's like having a, you know, I don't know, a 67 Buick that's constantly breaking down. you got to keep it apart. You, you put it back together with duct tape, uh, gaff tape, whatever. You spray paint it. You put it in. Yeah, either way, you're just fixing it with tape. tape. That's what I gather. Yeah, okay. That's, a, that's it. I mean, and that's how you fix a vampire. Well, hold on a second here. You know what, though, Jimbo? Mm. Before I get to my uh, <laughs> my answer here, you know what time it is right now in Lagos, Nigeria? Um, It's 5 p.m. here. So I am going to say that it is 2 a.m. Close. It's 12. It's 12. Ah. They're only, uh, that puts them seven hours ahead. They're on so, Greenwich Mean Time. Yeah, there's, exactly. It's like going to Europe. Yeah, hmm. there, that's it. Well, anyway, um, <laughs> you know, he. it's hard to really ever, ever second guess anything that Jim says. Because mm. he's so smart. He's so to it. He's so oh. in tune to, oh, stop. to the earth, to the world, and to humanity in mm. general. That, you know what? The obsession with vampires Probably originally starts since they were the old Dracula, Transylvania kind of thing. Now to the hipster, good-looking vampires that you see, and that the obsession continues over from really, you know, arcane, ugly, mean-spirited people to people that are the same, but they just look better. And all that is is a sign of the times from you know Hollywood beautifying everything. Mm. Um, We've been obsessed with, absolutely right, pain, just like the media shows. Everything that's painful gets airtime. Everything that's nice and fluffy rainbows and puppies does not get much Mm -hmm. airtime. And also anything that uh, generates drama along with sex, Mm -hmm. which vampires seem to have a lot of. Yeah. Um, Well, they're very suave. They're very suave. I mean, they're Rico Suave with fangs, really, if you Mm -hmm. think about it. They're Fabio with fangs. Yeah. You know, matter of fact, sometimes they look like Fabio. I always wondered if Fabio was a vampire. No, he seems to have aged really? not very well. What about Yanni? I I would believe that. But Yanni, yeah, absolutely. Yanni, he could be a vampire. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. You know, another person that doesn't seem to age is Brad Pitt at all. I mean, he seems to look the same. No. Tom Cruise looks pretty young too. So, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and so maybe I'm wondering if that whole Scientology thing got him into vampirism. 
Probably. And maybe that could be, you know, where you get to that next OC level when you get to the final higher levels because he's in the top two now. He's the two most uh, highly decorated Scientologists, you know, and he's so high up that I think he's an OC3 or 13, whatever the second highest is, oh. and he can almost levitate and, and, and turn back the clock at times. So that's how that's, he does all his own stunts. That's exactly right. And that's also how he looks so young because he can turn time back. Yeah. You know, that's pretty cool. Okay, well, um, let's go on to the next one. I hope you enjoyed that one there, Gary. We're going to go to Nora, who's in Malibu, California, and she writes, Dear Wynn, I am always constipated. Any brilliant, useful remedies or dietary tips you can share that may get me consistently regular? Hmm. Well, I think that's a lifelong battle maybe for you, Nora. Um, and I think the fact that you're looking for some dietary or some kind of maybe holistic remedies is wishful thinking. I think the only thing you can do is eat so much that you burst. And if you eat mm. enough, constantly eat enough, then you will constantly burst. And if you burst enough, then all of a sudden the constipation will go away because there's no, no real seal to hold things back. I don't know. What do you think, Jim? I, um, I'm i going to disagree with you, Alex. Man, I don't know that that's, that's really uh, the best solution. Um, I, I would suggest maybe some psyllium husk. Mm, psyllium um, husk. Yeah. Yeah. You can get it at uh, your local GNC mm. or any kind of health food store or drug store. Um, you just dissolve some in, uh, well, it doesn't really dissolve because it's, it's a husk. Mm. And, uh, in, in a glass of water and, uh, choke that, 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 bleh, choke that down every night before you go to bed. Tasty. And yeah, that'll keep you, uh, as regular as a German train. Hmm. Oh, great. Well, in that case, I mean, that's, that's spot on. Mm. I mean, then you could actually, like, set your alarm clock to go exactly at a certain time every yeah. single morning when you wake up. Mm hmm. Man, that's, I'd never thought of that. See, again, Jim is so in tuned to the world. He knows so much and he's so spot on when it comes to answering these questions. So yeah, do that, Nora, or, or just eat yourself, you know, almost to death. Yeah, until you burst. Until you burst. Oh, oh, so this bursting does not mean you, you, you survive this bursting? Yeah, you survive the bursting. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a whoopee cushion thing. You just squeeze out all the air and then you fill it back up and you squeeze out all the air and you fill it back up. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of it sounds like traumatic. Well, it is traumatic, but oh, I think, okay. But I, I think it's a solution, though. I mean, she didn't say yeah. uh, she didn't say like a painless solution. She didn't oh, say okay. some, a comfortable solution. Yeah. She didn't even say like choking down psyllium husk, you know, which sounds disgustingly awful as a flavor or whatever the heck it tastes like. I don't oh know. yeah, no, it doesn't taste like anything. Oh, it gets a weird sort of gel on the outside of each one, so it it very much just like rolls down your throat while you drink it. Hmm. And how long does that coating go, you know, last in your throat before it goes away? Oh, not very long. Okay, so it's not like, you know, sucking on cough syrup that sits no. around your mouth forever. No. Oh, okay, or a shot of Tawak or a Goldschlag or something. Okay, well, that actually also is a good idea. Maybe you should try to drink a lot of Tawaka because A, it's disgusting, B, it coats your whole body, which probably will make you uh, go to the bathroom a lot. And also, you can, and if you drink enough of it, you can go on both ends, so you won't be constipated at all. All right, so we have uh, Edita from Vilnius, Lithuania. That's Ooh. cool. Uh, dear Wynn, if the world would end tomorrow, what would be the one thing you regret you didn't do or accomplish yet in your life? Wow, now that's a deep question. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to leave it to the uh, nuclear scientist slash astrophysicist guy over here. Uh, former, thank you very much. I know, but, I mean, it doesn't mean it's not deep in your brain and you don't mm. haven't retained all that brilliant information <laughs> if i had retained a lot of it i might still be doing it <laughs> <laughs> um wow my biggest regret okay um there was a time um where i uh i went out with a young woman mm -hmm. and uh we came back to my apartment mm -hmm. and uh then uh we went to sleep and, uh, after drinking psyllium husk, uh, no, there was no psyllium husk involved. Oh, that's too bad. Um, but yes, that was the end of that. Uh, that, that was how that progressed. Um, was that the first and last time you saw this woman? Uh, yes. Oh. Yes, it was. Oh man. Um, and the it, one that got away, huh? I, it, it was the, uh, the brass ring that went ungrasped. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, there are there are uh, many other opportunities that I could have enjoyed myself more in my life that I have passed up, of all kinds of varieties. Mm. So, <laughs> if I could just have a, a blanket statement of times I passed up having fun, right? Like, yeah. So, would that be an accomplishment? I mean, she says, you know, you regret that you haven't accomplished yet. Yes, yes, that would have been a great accomplishment for me. Okay, well, <laughs> man, uh, well, Adida, that's a tough one, but you know, I'm gonna go to. 
Well, there's a couple of things that woulda, coulda, shoulda. Have, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, Monday morning quarterback kind of stuff. But I said, you know, I'll say something that's still kind of that's in the present here, and something that hasn't been done yet. And that's kind of a thing that I've been working on here, which is a philanthropy based project uh, to go climb Mount Everest. And uh, so I haven't done that yet. So it's regretful because a, not only do I want to climb Mount Everest uh, as something that I've uh, you know, st- uh, seeked out to do and something that I've been training and, and looking to do and, and climbing other mountains along the way, but more importantly, to do it for a bigger cause, a bigger reason, something that uh, has some lasting um, benefit, you know, to numerous people and numerous parties that are going to get involved in this project and process. So that would be my, probably my biggest regret right now that I haven't achieved that one yet. It's not quite there under the belt, uh, but um, maybe wow. down the lines of Jimbo. Thanks for making me feel really shallow, Alex. <laughs> well, I'm not trying to. I'm just, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm trying to be honest to Adida here and, you know, tell her what I haven't accomplished yet that I'm really have been striving or, or dying to want to do. Well, no pun intended there. I don't want her to die on Everest, but I'm willing to take the risk of it if it helps out enough people. And, uh, in which case, you know, it would be a great accomplishment if I got up and down and helped a lot of people and didn't die. So, um, you know, in that case, then it would be a past tense issue. Okay, well, that's uh, the one I can think of at the time. And uh, now we have Steve from Detroit, Michigan, and he writes, Dear Wynn, we out here in Detroit hear how so many people keep moving to Denver. Why is that? Hmm. I'm going to let Jim swing at this one because I think I have an answer to this one, but I'm going to let Jim swing first. Uh, well, I believe the the you've uh, two two kind of different disparate groups of people that are moving out to Denver. Um, there are a lot of potheads yes. that are moving out here. Spot on. Um and then there, there's also a lot of tech jobs mm. that people are moving out here for. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I don't know what. Both of those are correct, and both of those I uh, agree with 100%, Jim. I'm going to focus a little bit more directly on the things that you can see. Uh, you know, you don't know really who the tech guys are when you're walking on the street, driving on the street, or walking to your 7-Eleven and yeah. seeing people asking you for some of the craziest ways to A, get money from your B. You know, for example, the other, a couple of weeks ago, I saw this guy in front of the 7-Eleven downtown, in downtown Denver and Lodo area, and he had this box. You know, uh-huh. you take one of those kind of like a, you know, not a shopping cart, but you know, like those fold away, roll away kind of, mm-hmm. you know, little tiny grocery carts, utility carts that you yeah. can use. Well, he, he spent the time to jury rig this thing to have a plexiglass kind of box that he then had to glue or he had to like heat, melt the pieces together to make it fit. And he had broke it up into three little containers, all of them which had doors. One of them said cigarettes that you could open up the door and drop in a cigarette, a new used, whatever. Oh. The next one said weed. So you could drop in a joint, edible, whatever you want. And the third one said money. Oh. So he basically gave you as a kind, quote unquote, homeless person, you know, with his clean shaven yeah. face and his, and his Nikes on, uh, the option of how you wanted to donate to the cause. See, now that's smart. That is smart. Especially so, nowadays, because a lot of people don't carry money. That's right. So you give them the option. So maybe he is a pothead techie guy. Yeah. So he came out here for two reasons. Because he obviously showed some sort of, you know, ingenuity here to put this thing together and clever enough to get people to have, to give them three options of how they can donate to this guy. Yeah. But on the same token, one of them happened to be marijuana as an option. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I'm thinking, as a matter of fact, I know this also from quite a few people that I've talked to in law enforcement and so on. That yes, uh, Denver's had a huge influx of people coming out here thinking that this is, you know, basically the new Amsterdam. Yeah. Uh, the, the American Amsterdam where everything's free, every drug that you can think of, and it's all high and mighty and great times out here. Um, and so, you know, you have people from all across the country that are coming here. Unfortunately, that also brings some, uh, elements that aren't so desirable. I don't know how, uh, undesirable it is compared to, you know, areas of Detroit. But, uh, you know, hopefully, from what I hear, it doesn't necessarily go all the way to that point where it turns into some sort of abandoned town. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's hope not. <laughs> yeah, Steve. But the tech guys will keep Denver alive, I swear. There will never be another tech crash. Yeah, you can keep your crappy city in Detroit, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Come on out to Denver, Steve. You know, then you don't have to worry about what Detroit people think or why people are leaving Detroit and heading out to Colorado. Well, all right. Uh, we have one more little piece of inspiration to get you through the rest of the day, and that is called Horoscope Corner. Love, fortune, status. Let us do your astrological chart. Horoscope Corner on World Improv Network. Holy crap, you're an Aries. And it's not looking good for you this month, Aries, because... 
There's a lot of wind out, which means you could just blow away. How do you stop it? You go to the World Improv Network YouTube page, subscribe, like some videos. You can check out at World Improv Net on Twitter. Go on Facebook, look at the World Improv Network Facebook group, like it. And you could also, and you should most importantly, go to World Improv Network podcast on iTunes, subscribe, download, listen, leave a review and some stars. And if you do that, Aries, well, you'll still be an Aries, but your life will be a lot better. Thanks for listening to Win on KZKO. Don't forget to interact with the cast by sending your suggestions for each segment throughout the week by hitting them up on Facebook at World Improv Network, Twitter at World Improv Net, or the Win KZKO blog. See you next week.